What a response by Tennessee. I understand Tennessee is a good football team, but it got absolutely demolished at South Carolina a week ago. Had players not playing. There was all this speculation about a locker room divide. How about that response from Tennessee? 56 to nothing, a shutout victory against Vanderbilt to conclude the regular season at 10 and 2. We're going to recap it all right here on your Monday, Locked On Balls. You are Locked On Balls, your daily podcast on the Tennessee Volunteers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome into it. This is your Monday edition of Locked On Balls, and I'm your host, Eric Kane, at underscore Kane on Twitter, at Locked On Balls. I host this podcast each and every weekday morning. I also work for the On3 side that covers Tennessee. That is VolQuest.com. So happy to have you guys with us here today. Uh, we'll continue to recap uh, Tennessee and Vanderbilt. We'll get into some offseason content about season and review stuff, transfer portal, um, you know, early NFL departures, all that type of stuff, recruiting, signing days right around the corner. So there's still plenty to talk about for this Tennessee football team uh, now that the regular season has come to an end. Sadly, it's, it's kind of hard to believe. But, hey, Tennessee did do it on a high note, 56 to nothing win over Vanderbilt. Uh, we'll discuss the big takeaways here in segment one. We'll hit scoring plays courtesy of the Vol Radio Network in segment two. And then in segment three, we'll do our Caner grades and stats. That's what you have to look forward to here on a Monday show. Hey, we got Twitter Tuesday coming up tomorrow. Get me in your questions, your comments, your concerns, whatever you got at underscore Caner and at Locked on Vols. Uh, quickly, I will talk basketball, uh, just still football heavy. You guys know how things work. Got to pay the bills, right? Uh, Tennessee, though, Maui. Uh, invita- no, not Maui Invitational, Battle for Atlantis uh, champions. Took down Kansas. How about that? Uh, Julian Phillips, a really nice tournament. Santiago Vescovi, a really nice game against Butler. And then, of course, in the championship game against um, against Kansas. So uh, how about that? Tennessee basketball gets a Thanksgiving day or Thanksgiving weekend uh, tournament championship in the Battle for Atlanta. So that is some good stuff there. But first and foremost, how about that response from the University of Tennessee? 56 to nothing. Don't have your backup quarterback. You're missing some other guys. We'll get to that in a moment. Vanderbilt is not the 85 Bears. That's what I wrote on Sunday. But Vanderbilt had won back-to-back SEC games. Took down Florida. Took down Kentucky. They're feeling good about themselves. Senior day. It's at home. Finding for bowl eligibility. Tennessee got embarrassed nationally. You know, on ESPN the week before in Columbia. Gave up 63 points. <laughs> uh, playoff hopes dash. They're gone, Right. What a response from Tennessee in the face of a lot of scrutiny. Some of it deserved. Obviously, the performance against Columbia uh, in South Carolina, that was deserved. But some of the scrutiny undeserved in terms of questioning these players who saying they quit. I understand a lot of people you know, have theories or conspiracy theories or whatever. We've discussed some of this on the show. But it continued to be an ongoing theme throughout last week. Is the locker room divided? Does the defense hate the offense? All that type of nonsense. I gave my two cents on it. I'm not going to rehash it uh, anymore. But Josh Heupel took notes. Josh Heupel understood what was being said about his program. And in post game, after Tennessee's 56 to nothing win, again, where the offense put up 49 points, had a punt return as well, the defense pitched a shutout. Here's what Josh Heupel had to say about those speculations throughout the week of his football program. I know there's been a lot of, uh, of talk uh, outside of our program, um, you know, just from, from different people about what the culture is inside of our locker room, man. And, and uh, when I got here two years ago, um, nobody thought we'd win 10 uh, by this point, uh, but there were 30 plus kids that, that left this program. This group chose to stay and uh, they bought into to me, they bought into our staff, they bought into the, the culture, the connection. Uh, inside of uh, our locker room, what we're going to build inside of our program. And they built it. And they only did that by working hard, uh, competing together, uh, and then competing for one another. And, uh, you know, we've been been far from from perfect. And uh, that starts with me. Uh, but I'll, I'll tell you what, uh, this group loves one another. And uh, that's why, um, you know, we've turned this program in the right direction. And, and uh, the future is bright. And um, I'll go to, go to battle with these guys any day, anywhere. That was Tennessee head football coach Josh Heupel following Tennessee's 56 to nothing win at Vanderbilt in the pouring down rain. Says, future's bright. I'll go to battle with these kids any day of the week, any time. He mentioned the 30-plus kids who left via the transfer portal before Josh Heupel and his staff got here. And, and again, looking back on him, it's not like you um, you think any differently of those kids. You might, but, I mean, you know, Tennessee was the laughingstock. There was so much uncertainty, and, 
and you had a better opportunity to still leave, right? I'm not condoning it. I'm not I'm not praising it, but it, it just kind of was what it was. But Josh Hopp was very quick to point out, like, hey, there's been some people talking about my program this week. Um, a lot of a lot of national plaudits picking Vanderbilt to win this game straight up. Oh, I don't know about that. I mean, I thought it might be a little bit closer. I thought Tennessee, again, like I mentioned on Friday, I thought, and with Boogie, I thought Tennessee would, as the week went on, I felt more and more and more confident about Tennessee that this would open up to be a couple score games, which, again, in the end it was. But I don't think anybody saw that it was going to be a 56 to nothing beatdown, right? So Josh Heifel addresses that post game. Uh, Tennessee wins 10 games in the regular season for the first time since 20 or since 2003. 2003, also the last time Tennessee had an SEC shutout. That again came against Vanderbilt's 48 to nothing in Knoxville that season. Um, run game was incredible. 362 yards uh, of, uh, of rushing yards. That was a season high. The most since racking up 458 yards at Missouri uh, back in 2021, Josh Hopple's first season. Touchdown runs of 52 yards from Jabari Small, 50 yards from Jalen Wright. 83 yards from Jalen Wright, 80 yards from Dylan Sampson. Man, that run game really, really got going in the second half, and that's when Tennessee just took over this football game. Um, and again, I mentioned some of those injuries. <clears throat> Hendon Hooker did not play in this football game. Cedric Tillman, Brew McCoy didn't play a wide receiver. Gerald Mincy, your starting left tackle, didn't play. Brandon Turnage, didn't he go slaughter? Your starting cornerbacks each of the last three weeks, they didn't play in this football game. Trayvon Flowers, your starting safety, didn't play in this football game. Of course, Warren Burrell, when you're starting corners the last couple of years, has been out for a while, but he didn't play in this football game. And, and during the game, you had uh, J.J. Crawford, who has seen a lot of time at left tackle. You could consider him a starter as well, along with Gerald Mincy, but he left early with an injury. Jerome Carvin left early with an injury. Javante Spragans left early with an injury. I mean, Tennessee was going through it. And hats off, really hats off to some of these reserves especially on the defensive line and Dane Davis and Ollie Lane, who came in and played the bulk of the game on the left side at left tackle and a left guard, sprung most of those touchdown runs by pulling over, kicking out, and lead blocking uh, for Jalen Wright, for Jabari Small, for Dylan Sampson. Jackson Lampley also in that conversation. Wesley Walker, who plays a lot, but he slid back and started at safety. And, man, I thought he was really, really good. So hats off to those guys who came in and played and played in a major way. Again, Vanderbilt is not the 85 Bears, but what Tennessee accomplished with so many contributors on the shelf was pretty impressive, especially in the fashion that it did. Now, college football, it was crazy. Another crazy day on Saturday. It's why we love college football. You had uh, Clemson who lost, Ohio State's, gosh, who lost by double figures to Michigan. I wholeheartedly whiffed on that one. Okay, I'll be the first to say, I thought Ohio State, I thought it'd be the reverse. I thought Ohio State would come out on top there. It didn't. Um, you had Oregon, the loss as well. So Tennessee came in at number seven in the AP poll, number eight in the coaches poll. In terms of bowl projections, Tennessee wants to go to the Orange Bowl, right? Tennessee, if it's not in the Orange Bowl, likely in the Cotton Bowl. If Tennessee were to have lost against Vanderbilt, it would have been in the Citrus Bowl. That's out of the equation now. You're looking at the Orange Bowl potentially or the Cotton Bowl. If you go to the Cotton Bowl, you're playing a uh, a conference champion group of five, like a Tulane most likely Nobody wants that, right? You want to play in the Orange Bowl. Now, the tie-in for the Orange Bowl is the ACC versus um, the highest-ranked SEC team not in the playoff or a Big Ten team that's not in the playoff or Notre Dame. Penn State is the team to watch, okay? If Penn State is ranked higher than Tennessee in Tuesday's college football playoff rankings, that's not good news for the Orange Bowl. I'll tell you right now. So Tennessee is ranked one spot ahead of Penn State in the AP poll, Tennessee's at seven, Penn State's at eight. Penn State is ranked one spot higher in the coaches' poll. Penn State at seven, Tennessee at eight. So watch for Penn State on Tuesday. If you want Tennessee the Orange Bowl in Miami, in South Beach, that game's going to be on December the 30th. You want Tennessee to be ranked higher in the college football playoff rankings on Tuesday. So that's kind of a bowl watch there. But overall, what a response for Tennessee. Man, what a response for Tennessee. This has been a fun regular season. I understand it could have been better, and we'll have all offseason to talk about that later in the week. I'm going to do it. I'm excited about content programming this week. It's going to be fun because we don't have a game to talk about on Saturday. So we're going to look back and discuss and dissect and look to the transfer portal and the early departures, uh, recruiting, all that type of stuff. So there's a lot to come in just because the season's over. Don't go away. We've got so much to talk about in regards to the Tennessee football team. 
But what a response with Joe Milton. We'll get to him. He was okay. The run game was fantastic. And that defense, it showed out, and it put a lot of speculation to rest. Now, they still didn't play good last week. Recognize that. Understand it. But I thought that was a, a nice, nice, nice bounce back in uh, a, a big-time way. I, I really, really do. All right, so uh, here we go. We are going to get into some scoring plays courtesy of the Vol Radio Network. That is coming up next right here on Locked on Vols. But this episode is brought to you in part by Upside. Inflation has us all thinking about different ways to cut back, whether it's driving less, dining out less, or buying less from the grocery store. We can all agree there's nothing fun about less. That's why I started using Upside. Upside is an incredible app for anyone who buys gas, groceries, or dines out. With Upside, I don't have to cut back because I get cash back on my purchases. To get started, download the free Upside app. Use that promo code LOCKED. You're going to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. Next, you claim for you claim whatever you're buying uh, at Upside, just like you check in on Facebook, right? Check into the business, pay as usual, credit, debit card, and then that's when you get paid. In comparison, credit card uh, rewards and loyalty programs, you can earn three times more cash back with Upside. Upside's users are are earning more than a million dollars every single week. So start today. Download the free Upside app. Use that promo code LOCKED and get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. That's $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. All you need to do is use that promo code LOCKED. All right, so this episode is also brought to you in part by our friends over at LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available, and that's why you need to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job, add your job with the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile, spread the word, that you are hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and ultimately hire. It's why small businesses rank LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus the leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions, they do apply. All right, guys, welcome back into your Monday edition of Locked on Vols. I am your host, Eric Kane. Twitter Tuesday is coming up tomorrow. So, any questions, anything you want to get onto the show, you can fill up the comment sections on YouTube. You can hit me up at underscore Kaner and at Locked on Vols. Some of you guys reach out to me on Instagram. Um, I never get on there unless I have a notification so I can still see it on Facebook. I try to get as many as I can on every single show on Tuesday. So uh, that is what's coming up tomorrow. All right. So Tennessee 56 to nothing over Vanderbilt. It was not the best day offensively for a guy like Joe Milton. However, Vanderbilt again is not great. So Joe Milton was okay. He weathered the storm. <laughs> Excuse me. Literally, he weathered the storm. It was a monsoon in Nashville. My feet were wet. I was not happy. And I was sitting in the press box. Riddle me that, right? You guys who were there at the game and, you know, set out there and brave the elements, good for you. Uh, but Tennessee did enough and played outstanding defense, got help from special teams, and won by a score of 56 to nothing. 14 points in the first quarter, seven in the second quarter, 21 points in the third quarter, and 14 points in the fourth quarter. That is how the final score ended up at 56 to nothing in favor of Tennessee. So time for some scoring plays for the last time this regular season again. Tennessee will play a bowl game. We'll do this again on the show after that. But um, courtesy of the Vol Radio Network, I do have written permission from the Vol Radio Network to play audio calls on Locked On Vols for audio and YouTube platforms. So um, this is how it sounded, courtesy of the Vol Radio Network. Tennessee won the toss, took the ball. Okay, Tennessee actually took the football this time. That doesn't do that often. Wanted to take some pressure off of Joe Milton, and Tennessee did just that. 75 yards on four plays. Only 55 seconds off the clock. 14.05 left in the first quarter. Tennessee is on the board. 7 to nothing. Jabari Small, his first touchdown run of the day from three yards out. The handoff. Jabari Small up the middle. Fights his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Tennessee. That didn't take long. Joe Milton on the opening drive. Leads Tennessee right down the field. Big play. The throw from Joe Milton to Jalen Hyatt. And Tennessee leads early 6 nothing. 
Of course, that Jabari Small touchdown run, it was set up by the 61-yard he from uh, Joe Milton to Jalen Hyatt, who ran right by the defensive back and was wide open, caught it, and was down inside the five-yard line. All right, so Tennessee adds on another touchdown later in the first quarter. With a minute 57 left in the quarter, Tennessee marched 76 yards on 11 plays, took off nearly four minutes to go up 14 to nothing. Princeton fan, after being denied on third and goal, punches it in on fourth and goal from the one. Here's how it sounded. Now they're going to bring Tyree West in as a blocking back along with Princeton Fant. And now they're going to hand off to the Princeton Fant. He dives to the top and stretches, and he finally got in. Touchdown. It took about three efforts that time from Princeton Fant. Wow. But kept fighting and fighting and finally got in as he stretched the ball over the goal line. And Tennessee leads 13 to nothing as Princeton fan rushes for his fifth touchdown this season. We continue to talk about new wrinkles. So on third down, we go back to the Missouri game. When I brought onto the show, I was like, hey, guys, something I, I, I caught in, uh, in film review. Tennessee had three tight ends on the field. Hunter Solomon comes in motion, is the kickout man. You have Jacob Warren on the line, of course. You have Princeton fan in the backfield. He goes in and scores. That was the Missouri game. Tennessee runs that same play, but Princeton fan is stuffed on third and goal. Princeton Fant lines up at fullback directly behind Joe Milton, who's under center. You have Jabari Smalls, the deep tail back. Then you have you have uh you have uh Tyree West, who is a true freshman defensive lineman in the backfield offset. So there's free three backs in the backfield to have a full house set, just an offset full house essentially. And then you also have Dane Davis, an offensive lineman who comes in to play tight end on that right side. Very unique formations. Looks like Princeton fan is stuffed again, but Joe Milton, Dane Davis, and and Tyree West push him over the goal line. I was I was uh you know Music City drawbacks right. I was confused and I was I was wondering if they were going to say that forward progress had been stopped. But hey, they said it was a touchdown. Great effort from Tennessee and uh, Tennessee led fourteen to nothing uh, with just a minute left in the first quarter. Tennessee gets back on the scoreboard in the second quarter. A seventy three yard punt return from D Williams. To make it 21 to nothing, here's how it sounded from Bob Kessling and Pat Ryan. Williams and White deep for Tennessee to get the punt from Hayball. There's the left footer. Pretty good kick. Another end over end kick. It's going to be fielded at the 28 yard line. Some running room to the near sideline, right down the middle of the field, to the midfield, to the 40. He's gone. To the 20, to the 10. Crank up Rocky Top. Touchdown, Tennessee. Oh, my. 73 yards on the kick return by D. Williams. If you guys know me, you guys know I love special teams. Uh, Again, that is your seat on the bus for young guys trying to break through. Uh, the skills translate. If you learn how to play in space on special teams, you're gonna lo- you're gonna know how to tackle in space on defense. So I love the skills that translate over from special teams uh, to offense or defense. Now D Williams, a tremendous talent. He comes, makes this catch. Okay, you've got a sealed block from Jimmy Holiday, it allows him to break the edge. But Tennessee went two deep returners this game for Vanderbilt because the Vanderbilt was gonna punt away from D Williams and squirrel the off returner comes over and kicks out that up back springs the uh the punt return and D Williams gets that seal block from Jimmy Holiday gets north and south in a hurry use those speeds and that celebration that was something to behold Tennessee led 21 to nothing in halftime break you go to the third quarter and here's where those explosive runs start play number two of the first series for Tennessee on on offense Jabari Small from 52 yards it was the longest touchdown run of the season thus far for Tennessee. At the time, of course, that was short-lived. Milton out of the shotgun. Takes the snap. Gives it to his tailback. Jabari Small makes a nice move. Cuts it back right down the middle. He's at the 30, at the 20, at the 10, all the way for a Tennessee touchdown. Jabari Small made a great juke at the line of scrimmage, and then it was just a dead sprint. 52 yards. So Tennessee led 28 to nothing at that point. Later in the third quarter, the second of three touchdowns in the third quarter, Jalen Wright gets in on the mix. 50 yards to make it 35 to nothing. What I like about this run is he makes, he runs through a guy as well, not just away, but through a guy as well. And this is how it sounded on the Ball Radio Network. Jalen Wright, the tailback for Tennessee. Second down at midfield. Wright's got a big hole over the right side. He cuts to the 40. Oh. He's on the way to the 30, 20, 10. Another long Tennessee touchdown. 50 yards for Jalen Wright. His longest run of the season. His first touchdown of the night. And Tennessee now opens up a 34-0 lead over Vanderbilt. 
Later in the third quarter, Tennessee already leading 35 to nothing. Tennessee's in the red zone. I believe it's third and goal from the seven. And Joe Milton drops back and finds Walker Merrill, a Brentwood kid from the Mid-State. Bob Kessling says that you'll hear in just a moment. And Tennessee takes a 42 to nothing lead. That is Joe Milton's first and only touchdown pass of the game. Second and goal at the seven. Milton. Play fake. There he is. Fires right in the back of the end zone. Touchdown, Tennessee. And that's going to be Walker Merrill on the touchdown grab. The local product out of Brentwood gets the slant pattern. And Joe Milton right on target as Walker Merrill catches his third touchdown of the season. And Tennessee continues to pour it on Vanderbilt. It's now 41 to nothing, Tennessee. And then Tennessee tacks on two more touchdowns in the fourth quarter. Uh, the second of the three long explosive runs. This time this is from 80 yard, 83 yards away. It is Jalen Wright once again. And give this a listen. It's a long call, but it was a long run, courtesy of the Vol Radio Network. Joe Milton will take another series of downs with 11.28 to go. Milton hands off to his tailback. Big run and run to the 30. It's a sprint again to the 40 to midfield. And down the sideline to the 30 to the 20. Jalen Wright's done it again. Touchdown, Tennessee. 83 yards this time for Jalen Wright. And then finally, the true freshman, Dylan Sampson, gets into the mix. He had gotten a couple of carries even before this one. But Dylan Sampson goes from 80 yards away, and this just puts the bow on the package. It puts the cherry on the cake. 80 yards. Pater, Dylan Sampson, again, breaks a tackle, turns on the Jets, and runs down the sideline. Here's how it sounded from Bob Kessling and Pat Ryan. There's a handoff up the middle, and this is Dylan oh. Sampson. He's gone. Midfield. Nobody will catch him. To the 30 to the 20, to the 10, and an 80-yard touchdown run by Dylan Sampson. And Tennessee just crushing Vanderbilt with the run game right now. One play, and Dylan Sampson, 80 yards on that touchdown sprint, and Sampson gets his sixth touchdown of the season. So Tennessee looked good offensively. Again, scoring, um, what is that, eight touchdowns? One, two, three, four, yeah, math, right? Eight touchdowns, and um, we heard it all right here, courtesy of the Vol Radio Network. Uh, run. The run game is the – and I, I said this in the pregame two-minute drill over VolQuest.com. Something, you know, to get Joe Milton going. Um, you've been sitting around a little bit. You know, go down there, you know, call some easy passes for him, but also allow him to have a run game to his back. Now, the run game was okay in the first half, but it really got going in the second half with those explosive runs of, again, you got 52, 50, 83 – and 80 yards how about that Tennessee a season high 362 yards on the ground throughout Tennessee's 56 to nothing beatdown of Vanderbilt okay so we'll get into some more stats and I'll give my caner grades my position grades that is coming up next right here on locked on balls this week's thrilling moments in college football it is always brought to you by Nissan episode is brought to you in part by Nissan the thrilling designs behind the new lineup from Nissan are intended to empower drivers and vehicles as capable as the drivers themselves. When I think of unbelievable abilities on the football field this week, the thrilling moment, it's going to go to special teams. Already kind of broke it down a moment ago, but D. Sampson catches the punt return. He has a kickout block from his fellow deep returner, Squirrel White, to spring him. He gets a seal block from Jimmy Holiday to allow him to get upfield, and then he's off to the races, all right? He outruns, makes one guy miss, outruns north and south, Gets into the end zone, pulls up. Looks like he's got a hamstring injury, but he's just doing a dance. I don't know what the kids call it these days. Y'all can holler at me if you know what it's called. Whatever. He's dancing, and Tennessee was up 21 to nothing at that point in time, courtesy of a special teams uh, score. Special teams also, D. Williams, knocked the ball free on that fake punt. Special teams is a third of the game, and Tennessee played good special teams on Saturday. So uh, that is thanks to our friends over at Nissan, the thrilling designs. Um, each and every day, you can find them all at NissanUSA.com. Find your Pathfinder or Frontier today. That's at NissanUSA.com. We are rolling right along here on this Monday edition of Locked on Vols. Again, don't forget Twitter Tuesday coming up on tomorrow's show. Get me in your questions, comments, or concerns. Anything about bowl game projections, the season review. We're going to have a whole lot of fun this week breaking down all that stuff right here on Locked on Vols. Uh, I'm Eric Kane. Appreciate you guys for hanging out with me here today. Uh, Tennessee, just a complete beatdown, right? Tennessee had 513 yards of total offense on 53 plays. Vanderbilt only 254 yards on 77 plays. 24 more plays 
uh, for Vanderbilt in this football game. Vanderbilt averaged 3.3 yards per play. Tennessee, 9.7 yards per play. Nearly, again, a first down per play. Riddle me that, right? Uh, Tennessee held Vanderbilt to, let's see here, 3 of 17 on third down opportunities. 3 of 17 on third down opportunities. Man, how about that? Tennessee, meanwhile, was 0 for 7, but Tennessee was 2 for 3 on fourth down opportunities. Vanderbilt was 0 for 4. Talked about the run game. Tennessee was incredible running the football. 362 yards. That is a season high on 31 carries, 11.7 yards per rush. Vanderbilt 147 yards on the ground, 3.1 yards per rush. Tennessee threw for 151 yards. Vanderbilt threw for 107 yards. Uh, Tennessee won the turnover battle uh, 1 to nothing. Of course, forcing that... Uh, uh, the punter was you know, punter made a nice play. He ran for uh, the, the fake punt, got the first down, but D. Williams came in, put the head on the ball, popped that ball loose, and Tennessee turned it over and was going on uh, to the races. So uh, I thought Tennessee played really, really well in this football game. We'll start with the quarterback. Hinton, or excuse me, Joe Milton was okay. I, I know, guys, you're saying, but he kept missing on the deep balls. He kept missing on the deep balls. He kept missing on the deep balls, and that was an issue for Joe in his six quarters, really five and a half quarters, that he played in his two starts last year before going down with injury. Um, and it didn't look like he was much better in that regard. Hit his first one. It was beautiful. Uh, there was another long one in the third quarter that Ramel Keaton just dropped on the sideline. That was gorgeous. But he missed Princeton fan wide open in the middle of the field. He missed Squirrel White in the corner of the end zone. He missed Jalen Hyatt going down the deep sideline. There were some that he just missed, and that's something he's really going to have to work on before next season, of course, uh, throughout the practices until the bowl game. Thought Joe Milton was okay. Biggest thing, he ran the offense. He didn't turn the football over. He managed the conditions that was a monsoon out there, okay? And so credit to him, credit is due. He finished with 147 yards, 11 to 21, one touchdown. Um, he will get a B- minus in my grading book. All right, so A.J. Swan came in. He actually came in reserve for Mike Wright, finished 11 to 17, 79 yards, most of those coming on the uh, next to last series of the ball game. Mike Wright, 7 of 13, 28 yards. Mike Wright also gained 50 yards on the ground. That was on the last series of the game when they put him back in just to try to get some running game going and trying to get shut out. But uh, Mike Wright was not a non factor in this one. Ten so Joe Milton, the Tennessee quarterback, gets a B minus. Uh, the run game <clears throat> 362 yards. That is a season high for Tennessee. 160 on five carries for Jalen Wright, averaging, wait for it, 32 yards a carry. Dylan Sampson, 131 yards on 12 carries, averaging 10.9 yards a carry. Jabari Small had 79 yards on 11 carries, averaging 7.2 yards per carry. All those guys scored touchdowns. Jalen Wright and Jabari Small scored two touchdowns. The run game gets an A. All right, so tight ends. Wasn't a huge day for tight ends. Uh, Prince of Fan, of course, ran for a score. He was targeted twice, had no had no receptions. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, Hunter Salmon did have one reception for four yards. Jacob Warren didn't have any receptions. But again, tight ends are a big part of the run game. So tight ends will get an A in my book because Tennessee was so good on the ground and protecting Joe Milton, uh, who was not sacked at all. Uh, the wide receivers, you're going to get a B. Um, again, some of those, like I mentioned, the Ramel Keaton drop. I think the timing was off some. Like, I think some receivers got jammed in the line of scrimmage a little bit. There was one time I believe Squirrel White got held, and Josh Heupel was really making a point of that on the sideline. So, it what as it always is, and I remember saying this last year, it's not always just on the quarterback. Um, I'm going to give the, the wide receivers a B in this one. Uh, you had Jalen Hyatt led the way with 86 yards on five catches or three catches. Squirrel White led the team in targets, four catches, 18 yards. Ramel Keaton, four targets, three catches, 36 yards. Walker Merrill. One reception off one target, seven yards, and a touchdown. I'll give the wide receivers a B. The offensive line gets an A. Again, over 500 yards total offense, uh, 362 yards on the ground, no sacks. And more importantly, you had Ollie Lane and Dane Davis play pretty much the entirety of three quarters. Jackson Lampley came in and played big minutes as well. Tennessee's reserves stepped up, and they deserve to be congratulated in a big way. That offensive line gets an A. Defensive line, again, I mentioned – you know, rushing for Vanderbilt, they had 147 yards. They didn't have anything hardly going at all through the air, 107 yards, three total sacks on the day for Tennessee's defense. Thought the defensive line played really well. Thought Roman Harrison played extremely well. <clears throat> Roman Harrison, four tackles, two sacks, two and a half TFLs. Um, another quarterback, Curry. Thought he played really well. Thought um, 
Latrell Bumpfus played really well. Had a big uh, pat down uh, on a fourth down, um, uh, a fourth down play whenever Mike Wright was rolling out or AJ Swan, whoever it was. And it was fourth down, and, and Latrell Bumpfus got his hand up and batted it away. Thought Latrell Bumpfus penetrated really, really well in this football game. I'm giving the defensive line an A. Sure, they jumped off sides a couple of times, which is not great, but defensive line I thought played pretty well. Tennessee overall, three sacks, 13 TFLs on the day. Defensive line will get an A. Linebackers, I'll give a B. I thought Aaron Beasley played pretty well. I thought Jeremy Banks' return played well. Seven tackles for Banks. Uh, Beasley had six tackles, I believe. Had a pass breakup, had a quarterback hurry. Juwan Mitchell had five tackles. They weren't perfect. A couple of missed tackles in there. A couple of laps and, and coverages, as always. But I thought the linebackers and pitching a shutout played pretty well. I'll give the linebackers a B plus. Defensive backs, Wesley Walker playing safety. Boy, I like that. He had one play. Um, on the second drive for Vanderbilt in this football game when they went jet sweep out of the motion. Wesley Walker rolled down to the linebacker depth, saw it, burst back into the backfield, made a TFL back there for a loss of about four yards. It looked really good. It was instinctive. He knew what was coming. I love Wesley Walker at safety. I really do. I thought Tamari McDonald played well as well. Um, <clears throat> thought he had a good game. And Kamal Haddon, hey, I was all over in this past week about how he was talking and getting beat. Um, I think South Carolina is a little bit more athletic than Vanderbilt, of course. Thought Kamal hadn't bounced back and had a good day. I'll get the defensive backs an A minus. Christian Charles, who played pretty much the entire game at quarterback, he got bit on the double move. Um, that ended up not being a pat or not being a reception as they went and reviewed it. Uh, but that is really the only thing that comes to mind. Jalen McCullough didn't do a few things that were not great, but overall, again, you pitch a shutout. It is really hard to um kind of nitpick here. So I'll get the defensive backs. An A minus. Special team gets an A. You had a punt return to 73 yards. You had um D. Williams forcing a fumble and getting the football back after the after the fake punt. Kickoff team was not as sharp as what it usually is, but um it was what it was. Tennessee had all their PATs in a game again where you went 56 to nothing. Special teams gets an A. And then coaching gets an A. Most importantly, because this team did not quit. This team did not fold. It would have been so easy to say, oh. College football playoffs, they're done. We got our tails whipped in Columbia. We're done. It's Vanderbilt. Who cares? They came back. They won in a big way, 56 to nothing. For that reason and that reason alone, the coaching staff gets an A in my book. Tennessee wins the regular season, 56 to zero. The last game of the regular season over Vanderbilt on the road in a monsoon. And Tennessee played good football. Tennessee finishes the regular season 10 and two. Could it have been better? Absolutely, but there's still a chance to win 11 games depending on what bowl is to come after. Now, what bowl is that going to be? We'll discuss all that on uh, Twitter Tuesday and, of course, as the uh, the week goes on. Tons of great content we're going to get into, season and review, um, discussing some possibilities of transfer portal, early declarations of the NFL draft, uh, recruiting, tons and tons of stuff coming up here on Locked On Balls. Get in your questions for Twitter Tuesday as well. That's coming up tomorrow on the show. So. Tennessee responds in the right way. Season high rushing yards for the backup quarterback. Tons of guys out. Defense comes in, pitches, pitches a shutout. How about that response? How about that response from Tennessee? Job well done, and uh, Tennessee gets the win over the Vanderbilt Commodores. All right, thanks so much for making Locked On Balls your first listen. Make Locked On SEC your second listen today. Biggest stories, biggest takes, the news of the day. That is Locked On Sports today. That is your second listen right behind Locked On Balls which is your first listen each each and every single day. Guys, thank you so much. Hope you had a great Thanksgiving. We'll be back tomorrow, same time, same place. We will do it again right here on Locked on Balls.